Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the sport wing of the FD Tenant. Now the sport wing is an aileron controlled wing which is a little bit dihedral. It's still incredibly stable, but also offers amazing aerobatics with its aileron control. Now this wing is fantastic for all around aerobatics. It's incredibly agile. It's also a great companion to the FT Aura 5. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So before we start on our sport wing, the first thing we're gonna do is go through and make sure we have everything we need to build the airplane. We're gonna have our two main wing panels. We're gonna have our two spars. We're gonna have our dihedral gauge that's labeled with S for sport. And along with that, we'll have our two control horns and our servos. Make sure that your servos are already pre-centered and also that your servo arms look like what you have here. Now, if you've never centered your servos before, we have a really great video that's gonna be linked down the bottom that'll show you how to simply and quickly do it. Now the neat thing about all of the wings that are built with the FT Tenant is they all basically build the exact same. So if you've already done the primary wing, you're gonna be able to see that there's a lot of common techniques that are gonna be done in this wing. The first thing that we're gonna do is a double bevel cut right along the leading edge. Now to do our double bevel, we're gonna fold the leading edge 180 degrees over. And I'm gonna take my hobby knife, open it up to the second detent, and making sure the blade is not perpendicular but parallel, we're gonna cut a nice, clean bevel, making sure that we keep our blade right to the one side of the, of the paper. One. There's two. Now it's really important that whenever you do your bevel for your leading edge that you can easily take this close to a 45 degree angle. Oftentimes that means cutting a very wide open bevel. Another technique you can do is just take a simple magic marker, use the cap, and then crush down that edge to open up that channel. Bevel cuts are very common with any kind of airplanes that you're gonna be building with flight test. It's really easy to practice on scrap foam. We have a really great video showing you other techniques you can do not even having to use razor blades. That looks great. Let's go ahead and do the same process now on the other side. Again, we're gonna open this up, keeping the blade nice and open. There's one. There's two. Just crush that down just a little bit more. These markers and this blade are all included in our Crafty Kit V2 along with our FT300 hot glue gun. Specifically for the tenant and glue into EPS foam like we're going to be doing in the future, the adjustable temperature down to low is incredibly important so you don't melt that EPS foam. Now that we have our bevel cuts done, let's go ahead and do a single bevel, this time on the aileron side of our control surface. And to cut our single bevel, we're gonna fold this 180 degrees and our bevel this time is gonna be on our aileron side. There's one. Anytime we kinda kinda come and get to close corner, I just like to go around and just work it that way. There we go. It's really important whenever you're doing a single bevel on a control surface side that you have no resistance whatsoever when you bend this down. If it resists you and it constantly wants to fight you when you bend it down, there's a good likelihood that you have a little bit of foam right where the paper and the foam meet. You can simply remove that with a piece of sandpaper or come back with your razor blade and cut that out. Make sure you have no resistance whatsoever when you push on this. Let's do the same process now on the other side. Now that our wing panels are prepped, let's install our spars. To install our spars, we're gonna have the score cut facing up here, and we're just gonna make sure that the back surface and the sides all line up with the trail edge of the bottom skin of the wing. Once we're happy with that, we'll fold that over 180 degrees. Just a wiggly bead of glue right down the middle. We can flip that over. And again, we're just gonna make sure that the edges right down the sides here and on both sides are nice and flush. Flat pressure, let it dry, and we'll move on to the other side. Again, same process as before. Make sure everything's nice and flush. Just a wiggly bead of glue right down the middle. We can flip that over. Again, we're just gonna make sure that the edges right down the sides here and on both sides are nice and flush. These spars are incredibly important because not only do they help give the airfoil its shape, but they also give it an incredible amount of strength. 
Now that the spars are on, we're gonna take the tip of our screwdriver and we're just gonna break through the outer surface of the paper on both sides of our score cut. There's one and there's two. Once we've done that, we can use the tips of our finger to kind of get a little bit of shape onto our wing. Then we can fold that over, just like that. Once we're happy with how everything fits, we're gonna apply a thin ribbon of glue right over top of the score cut, keeping as thin as possible. There's one, and there's two. And we're gonna do that same motion again, this time going down to the table about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, up. One, two, three, four, five. What we're doing is we're allowing the wing to take its shape, but we're not gluing it down to the spar just yet. Now that we have our airfoil locked in, we're gonna come back one final time, put a bead of glue right over the top main spar, and then one down the center of the leading edge. I always like to start and stop about a quarter to a half an inch from each side. Right back against the table again, and we're making sure that the top surface of our wing over top of the spar is parallel with the bottom surface of the wing, and also that our trailing edge is just lightly touching the back of the table. Give this a good minute to fully dry before moving on. Make sure that when you remove your hands that the wing doesn't accidentally clamshell open. All right, a minute's passed and you can see when I move my hands, the wing doesn't open back up. We're gonna do the exact same process now on the other side. Come back with the tip of a pen or a screwdriver. Just gently break that surface of the top. And using our fingertips, we're gonna kind of lightly fold it over, establishing that wing shape making sure that the top surface and the bottom surface are parallel over the spars. Looks good. Now we can come back with a very thin bead of glue, just enough to go in that crack. Back down on the table. One, two, three, four, five, open. One, two, three, four, five, open. There we are. Now that we have our wing shape, we'll lock everything down with a bead of glue right over the spars and right down the middle of the leading edge. Back down on the table. Notice when I'm pushing, I'm not pushing the back part on the hinge line, I'm pushing the trailing edge down to make sure it meets at the back of the table. Now that we have our two wing panels done, let's go ahead and join them together. We're gonna join them together the exact same way we did on our primary trainer, except this time the dihedral is gonna be in the middle. Just gonna do a quick test fit here. And a real easy way to get a nice crushed dihedral is just take any one of your wing panels and just rub it back and forth on your table with a slight angle. It doesn't have to be very big. And that's gonna give it just a very gentle crush. There we go, perfect. Now that we've done that, we're gonna make a quick little hinge with a piece of two inch tape. Press these two together. There we go. And now we can take our dihedral gauge that's labeled S and we'll clip that on the wing tip. Whenever we check for dihedral, make sure that your dihedral is enough to where everything meets nice and flush in the center. You may need to pull the tip of your wing back just a little bit because this part's gonna be tighter than the back trailing edge. Once we're happy with how everything fits, we'll clamshell this open. Just like before, a really nice healthy bead of glue on one side of the wing. There we go. Right back to the table here, nice and gentle. Gonna crush in on itself. I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of foam, smear any excess off that you see here. Give this at least a full minute to fully dry and also look at your leading and trailing edge to make sure that they meet up with each other. Now that our glue is dry, we're gonna reinforce the back trailing edge with a piece of barbecue skewer that's included in our kit. We're just gonna go just on the inside of the two aileron halves. Easy way to break it is just to crack it in all different directions, breaking the strands. And then also right in the middle, I'm just gonna put a very gentle cracked bend. There it is. Now I can apply a bead of glue right on the top. A bead of glue on the trailing edge and then place this in place. And this is gonna protect the trailing edge of the wing from the rubber bands digging into it. 
Last step is to reinforce with a piece of two inch tape. Now when we pull this out, you notice that the wing keeps its dihedral. Dihedral, even on a sport wing, is incredibly important because it adds a level of stability for flight that's gonna give you a little bit of self-riding tendency, but also keep your turns nice and coordinated. And just like in our trainer wing, if you're gonna use your sport wing for a pusher configuration, you're gonna to need to cut out along the dotted lines, including the uh, barbecue skewer reinforcement in the back. Now that we have our main wing built, let's go ahead and put our attention towards our servos here. By now, hopefully you've already pre-centered and installed your servo arms. Now we're gonna mount these servos in a very specific direction here, and that's gonna hopefully give us the ability to install the FT or five and not have you have to do any servo reversing, although it's incredibly easy to do. The first step that we're going to do with mounting our servos is we're gonna quickly press in our servo control horns. And we're gonna make sure that we have full deflection and also that the whole of the control horn is directly over our hinge line when it's in the neutral position. That's perfect. Now that we're happy with that, a simple bead of glue to lock that in. That's all we need. Press that right down into place. Again, we wanna make sure we have nice, full controlled flexion back and forth. While that's drying, we're gonna prepare our push rod. Our push rod is gonna give us the ability to move our control surfaces through the servo. To make our push rods for our ailerons, we're gonna take the very point of where it bends right here. We're gonna measure two and a quarter inches. I'm just gonna put a little mark with my black marker. Now the very important part whenever we're doing our Z-bends is to make sure that we're bending in the same plane. We're gonna make sure that our Z-bend is pointing nice and vertical. And now with our pliers gripping right on the one side of our mark, we're gonna bend that 90 degrees up. This would be a good time if anything looks weird, if we have to twist it, you can simply grab that. Make sure it lays nice and flat on the table, just like that. Now that we have that done, we're gonna grip it about three, four millimeters up, a little over an eighth of an inch and then 90 degrees to the right. At this point, we can cut it off and do about a quarter inch. And then we're gonna straighten out our Z-bend and that's gonna give us a perfect push rod. Now that we have our push rod made, we're gonna slide this right into our control horn first, wiggle that back and forth, and then we're gonna do a test fit. Now it's really important that we make sure we pick the proper hole for our servo arm. The further away from our servo screw that we go, the more control deflection we're gonna have. We don't necessarily want that because more control does not mean a better flight experience. In this case, we're gonna to go to the center hole that you see right here. A little wiggle motion, pop that through. If we did everything correctly, when we go level, you're gonna see that this goes nice and neutral and it can deflect both ways. Now that we're happy with the fit, I'm gonna remove the sticker because we don't wanna accidentally just glue the sticker on, we wanna glue the servo arm. It's also a really good idea to use a piece of sandpaper or even a razor blade to scratch up the surface and that way the hot glue is gonna grip even better. One last test. Again, we're making sure we've, if you haven't pre-centered your servos, make sure you do that. And if your servo moves at any time, you can go back and recenter them. That looks nice and flush. You can now open this up. Now we can place a bead of glue right on the top there. And we're gonna move the servo so this is nice and level, just like that. The last step on the servo here is to dress the wires. Now we're gonna take this wire right up to where the fuselage is and using a piece of tape right around where the center of gravity markings are on our wing, we're simply gonna tape the servo connection down. This is gonna help us when we make the connection from the wing to the fuselage. Let's go and do the exact same process on the other side. And just like before, we're gonna do a quick test fit on our control horn, making sure that the whole of the control horn is directly over the hinge line. After we're happy with that, we'll glue that in. While that's drawn, we'll prepare our control horn. Since we already used our Z-bend, we'll make a new one here. We're just gonna grip it about a quarter inch, bend it 90 degrees, rotate that 90 degrees, go down roughly an eighth of an inch, bend it again, and then finish off our Z-Bend by rotating it 90 degrees. Now that we have our first Z-Bend made, we're gonna measure two and a quarter inches. Take our marker, place a mark right on the end, making sure that our Z-Bend is vertical and pointing up. We're gonna grab just on the side of the mark 
and bend vertical. Easy way to tell, make sure everything lines up is to lay it flat against the table. And if this is at a different angle, it's gonna pop up or push down. That's perfect. Now we can grab it about an eighth of an inch, put it 90 degrees to the right, and cut off the excess. Last step in preparing our push rod, is to bend this 90 degrees. And again, we'll lay it back on the table and check for flat. Now we can install our push rod into the control horn. And with the servo arm facing towards the center of the wing, we're gonna to go to the middle hole of our servo arm and lace it through. Quick test fit to verify everything looks good. We're gonna hold this nice and level. Once we're happy with the way everything looks, we can peel the back of our servo, making sure we're not gluing the sticker to the wing, but the servo to the wing. Wipe off any oil and use a piece of sandpaper to rough it up. One last test fit. Then we can apply some glue to the back of the servo, right down to the wing. I'm gonna hold the aileron neutral with one hand while pressing the servo down with the other. Our last step is address the servo wires by just simply using a piece of tape gluing up against the back side of this bar. Make sure you leave at least an inch or so so you can easily make your connection to your wing to your fuselage. The sport wing of our FT-10 is now done. This is gonna be a fantastic wing whether you're in a pusher or tractor configuration, giving you the ability to do really great aerobatics and it'll also be your first experience in four channel flight. Look forward to building with you again in our next portion of this build project.